Next question is from Connor Nagel 7 When should you cap off your caffeine consumption and how do energy drinks contrast with pre-workout? Okay, so what does he mean by contrast? I with think pre-workout? just the difference between the two. Like you know, pre-workout and energy drinks, well, the same difference. Yeah, let's start with the first part. So, how do you know uh, when you should cap off your caffeine uh, intake? Um, when the side effects of caffeine start to become a little pronounced. Mm. Okay, so when you notice that your anxiety is a little high, you're jittery, you start to get really strong crashes. So you have your caffeine, you feel mm. great, get headaches. Then it hits, it drops off, and all, all of a sudden you feel super unmotivated and like you're you're fiending for more caffeine. Uh, heart arrhythmia, um, excessive palm sweating, uh, you know, sleep issues. I noticed TMJ uh, issues as well. Do you? So yeah, I'm like, I'm really like grinding my teeth or, or, you know, I can just feel that tension start to kind of make its way from my jaw down to my neck even. Yeah. And, and this is very individual, right? People have different tolerances to caffeine. Uh, their, their bodies metabolize it differently. Like my tolerance for caffeine is a lot lower than say Adams and and j- especially Justin's right. These guys can drink uh, way more caffeine than I can and be fine. And uh, for me, if I tried to match them, I would feel terrible. I might even get nauseous or sick. So you got to kind of feel this out uh, for yourself. So I've noticed for me, anywhere between. 250 to 400 milligrams in a day is about my peak. Well, don't you think that this is real? I mean, this is really hard for a lot of people to be able to, I mean, you listed off a bunch of potential side effects, but the truth is most people won't notice those things because they, they'll have gradually moved their way up and their body will have adapted to that mm. new milligram amount that they're now consuming. Yeah, but the side effects tend to grow. Yeah. You know, that's what sure, tends to happen. They, sure, they, they do, but they grow at such a, a slow pace in relation to the extra uh, dosage of caffeine that they may not really notice those things that and much. They're, they're paying attention to when they feel better, which is when they're getting the caffeine. Right. Yeah. And so I, for me, you know, I've just decided that, you know, once I get to a point where I'm having, you know, more than two or three cups of coffee slash energy drink slash pre workout in a day, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's just, a, I, and I don't ever want to be a slave to anything. Even if I'm not getting like crazy adverse effects, even if I'm not getting TMJ, I'm not losing sleep at night. I just don't. I mean, and here's it for, it, I mean, for financial reasons, like why spend the money yeah. on on that much caffeine when I could cut it in half just by winging myself off for a week or two and then going back yeah. on and then now it affects me like it's brand new again. Yeah. So mm-hmm. make no mistake, caffeine is a, is a powerful drug uh, for all intents and purposes. You're looking at a substance that you you build a tolerance to. It's got addictive, very powerful addictive qualities for people who are like, yeah, right, caffeine's not addictive. Okay, if you drink coffee every day, stop drinking it and see how you feel. You get very strong physiological uh, negative effects. You get those, uh, you know, uh, effects of where you could, your body needs it. It fiends for it. It might take you a week or two weeks to start to feel normal. Um, it, overdose on caffeine is very easy. I mean, very very easy. Two hundred milligrams might be a normal dose for someone. Give them a thousand milligrams and they might die. Literally, that's the. Uh, in fact, I think a good percentage of them would probably die from a thousand milligrams. So it's a very powerful drug. It's just one of those drugs in society that's super accepted. So we tend to don't we don't treat it like yeah. a drug because anything that makes you productive is somewhat you know accepted. Well, well I isn't mean, it funny though? That's how it is. It's like I think of it like alcohol or like smoking weed or like anything else. It mm-hmm. is. It is. And so anytime any of those things creep into my life where I feel like okay, it's taking more control of me than I have control of it. That's my signal to to come off. All right. Well, here's some hard uh, recommendation. Here's some specifics, right? So I used to tell my clients, I used to tell my clients, don't have any caffeine after about 3 p.m. Um, because for most people, even if you go to sleep, yeah. if they test you, it negatively affects your sleep if you drink it past 3 p.m. So that was a good control for people. They would drink coffee and then after 3 p.m. they would cut it off. If you find yourself needing coffee all day, like, okay, I need it in the morning to get started. 
Now I need it at lunchtime to keep going. Now I need it again. Now, oh, now I need it because I'm going to go home and be around the kids and I need more caffeine. Mm -hmm. Then you probably need to wean yourself off. And here's the wonderful thing. If you wean yourself off and reintroduce it, uh, lower doses now have an incredibly awesome effect uh, on your body. Yeah, I've also found that, you know, really focusing on hydration and drinking more water yeah. has helped me to in that transitionary, you know, period too, because I would get really bad headaches if I was trying to lower the amount of caffeine, like, because I was, I, I would get myself up to a ridiculous amount and then try and pull myself back. And uh, so that, that really helped in terms of, you know, providing more of that energy that lasts throughout the day too. So I wasn't going for that second. Second, third cup. I yeah. feel like you have to find your your individual threshold on what amount, what dose is it difficult for you to come off of. And I treat, like I said, marijuana, kratom. I use kratom every now and then. Like there's, I have all these things that I've allowed that are, you know, considered would fall in that class of like drugs, right? Even though I know kratom's like an herb, but it, if it's something that the body can become addicted to. Whatever amount is difficult for me to say, I don't want to have it for two or three days in a row. That's my amount. Like that's the, my amount that I. Uh, that's my threshold. So mm -hmm. somebody might be able to go all the way up to four, six hundred milligrams of caffeine in a day, and then go to zero for a week and not have any side effects. Yeah. If that's it, then maybe that's you. Maybe you're fine with that. But other people like Sal gets up to 200, 250 milligrams of caffeine and then he goes to zero and he's got headaches and he's got problems with it. Like that's the, my thresholds before that. Yeah, so. it takes a lot of self-awareness, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you, you got to pay attention. It yeah. took me a long time to figure that out. I mean, I would take energy drinks and supplements and ephedra me, me back too. in the day like it was yeah. like it was water. It took me a long time to kind of figure this out. Now, the difference between energy drinks and pre-workouts, energy drinks, lots of caffeine, pre-workouts, also lots of caffeine. Pre-workouts tend to have other compounds that have performance enhancing or muscle building uh, type properties. So sometimes a pre-workout will contain creatine or they'll have beta alanine um, or they'll have alpha GPC or other compounds that help with uh, specifically athletic performance. So like, uh, like Legion's pre-workout um, Pulse, for example, it's got caffeine. So it's got the same amount of caffeine uh, you may find in a really, really strong energy drink, but then it has all those other compounds that have uh, like muscle building or performance enhancing type benefits. The truth is though, what you feel is the caffeine. Like most people, when you talk about pre-workouts and energy drinks, the thing that has all this list of all these crazy positive things, right? That they, they throw in there so they can probably sell it for more. At the end of the day, the thing that you like oh, the yeah, most- Oh yeah, you take the cat. Although I will say this, alpha GPC, beta alanine, somebody who doesn't take stimulants, so somebody who doesn't ever take caffeine- They'll feel that. They'll feel uh, more focus, and studies will support this and prove this. But if you're used to stimulants, it's the stimulant you want. Yeah. That's what it is.